It's Heavy Trev from Better Than Mud, and on today's edition of Asinine and Socialist Things that AOC says, headline, AOC says impeachment necessary to unite Dems, stop potential compromise of the 2020 election. So let's dig in and listen to this interview with the unsuspecting and I think somewhat reluctant Wolf Blitzer on CNN. Here we go. Uh, are you satisfied with how the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff conducted this hearing today? Absolutely. I think Chairman Schiff did a phenomenal job, especially considering how contentious parts of the hearing were, were between parties. There was a lot of different ways that this could have gone off the rails, and I think he did an excellent job keeping these hearings off the rails, like you know, bringing up tweets in the middle of a, a testimony of a witness. Uh, from our president that had no reason to be injected, interjected into the proceedings whatsoever. Fair, but focused and really centered on the facts and the witnesses that were testifying today. The House of Republicans, as you know, they're clearly unanimously standing by the president, at least so far. Will it hurt Democrats if you can't successfully persuade any Republicans uh, that, uh, that uh, this all rises to impeachable conduct? I, I'm actually not overly concerned about this because I think the whole point of our public hearings is to present these facts to the public and to let the general public really see the facts for themselves and to understand. Because we really screwed up. We were doing the, the behind closed doors hearings and that was really hurting public sentiment relative to our caucus. That, that's the true meaning of what she's saying right there. Stand why we have chosen to move forward with, in, with the impeachment inquiry. I think what we heard today was just astounding and devastating um, news for the president, for anyone that was in the administration that was really uh, partaking. And frankly, this is devastating for the country. Our national security has been compromised. Our elections are potentially compromised. And so I How are our elections already compromised? It's not, at, at the point where this phone call between Trump and the Ukrainian uh, president occurred, Biden had not declared his candidacy. Were we all just to assume and then base these legal um, proceedings off of an assumption? And the talk about national security being compromised, that's insulting, frankly, because if, if, if we are uh, compromising national security why, with our relationship with Ukraine, why did we give them during the Trump administration javelin missiles and during the Obama administration essentially just provide MREs and ancillary miscellaneous things like that that aren't necessarily weapons. They aren't weapons whatsoever for them to fight uh, the Russian-backed um, forces. I think right now what Republicans have to do is decide what their role is going to be in the scope of history. Um, because we will look back at this time and really, truly examine the moral decisions that, that each member of Congress has decided to make. So the moral decisions. Okay, so let's go back talking about national security and, and, and the moral decisions are being made. So the, the overall premise of withholding aid to um, to Ukraine, which we've done to other countries, which actually came out in testimony last week um, from others during during this inquiry, um, was based upon rooting out corruption and things that don't al align with our national security uh, policies and initiatives. So, so in, in my mind, that being immoral. All right, how is that even remotely immoral? Um, that we're trying to make sure that we do our fiduciary fiduciary responsibility before dumping millions upon millions of dollars into a foreign country. What jumped out at you, Congresswoman, about the most devastating new information that emerged? Well, you know, it's been discussed, but this call with Ambassador Sondland and President Trump, it's a personal call that, that, um, that our witnesses testified in aid is overhearing, where Trump was personally invested in these investigations I think so when you just say personally over and over again it doesn't negate the fact that a lot of this is, is hearsay that we had somebody here over here from an aide um, the conversation between Trump it has added a layer of proximity you know one of the in Sondland excuse me I forgot that I forgot to say his name how can you forget that guy it was hysterical is that the president could have potentially tried to get out of this situation is saying, you know, put um, several degrees of separation between him and some of this illicit activity. But what we heard today was that he himself 
was making and partaking in some of these phone calls, um, not just Giuliani, not just anyone else in administration, but him. And that really adds a, a, a much more disturbing degree of the involvement that he had in using the powers of government to create politically motivated investigations. Right. Like a news conference with the Turkish president, the president said he doesn't remember. But wait, t- time out, time out. So, so were the investigations truly political, politically motivated? We have yet to establish that that is the real motive behind um, encouraging Ukrainians to perform these in- investigations and to root out corruption. Um, I, I, I'm just the hypocrisy between, OK, Joe Biden can essentially say that his actions forced forced the Ukrainians while he was serving um, as vice president to fire a prosecutor. Um, under the guise of eliminating um, eliminating corruption. However, this is the same prosecutor that was going to be investigating uh, Burisma, and which is essentially the, which is the company that Hunter Biden, his son, was on a board member of, and being paid what eighty three thousand dollars per month. The hypocrisy the hypocrisy is just what disgusts me with this whole thing. For any such call, poo pooing the whole thing. What do you say to the president? Well, you know, if he doesn't remember making a call like that, I would, you know, I I would be quite concerned, but that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Um, I think a lot of what the president's reactions tend to be deflecting, but I think it is quite telling that he is not being defensive about this. Um, This is an extraordinarily serious allegation that is being made by a person who works in his administration. And so if he were to defend about uh, defend this, he should do so quite forcefully. Um, the Remember, and then and then beyond that, the quid pro quo that that AOC is referencing here is, is relative to simply a meeting. It's not even relative to the aid, for that matter. Allegation that's coming from someone within his own administration is extraordinarily serious. That's not something that you remember or not remembering whether you did or didn't do. A lot of the initial what did she just say? All of this uh, uproar uh, involved the words quid pro quo. Do, do Democrats, Congresswomen, need to fine-tune their language on all of this? How do you think Democrats should be making their case to the American people? Well, I'd like to remind everyone that one of the initial folks who brought this conversation of quid pro quo into this conversation was the president. It was when these allegations first came out about Ukraine, he started tweeting and frankly raising the bar saying, no quid pro quo, no quid pro quo. It wasn't Democrats that were even trying to set that bar um, because you don't even need quid pro quo. But he met it, aside from that, all of this aside, what we're centrally focused on is really him using the power of the United States government to engage in extortion of a foreign government in order to intervene in our elections. And so I think that that's our message. Um, the fact that he undermined national security, that he, that, that he is trying to undermine our uh, elections, that he is. So, uh, okay. So, so she, I, she finally got on track there towards the end and, and, and made a cogent point. Um, or at least in her mind, a cogent point that he is that the president is under or has undermined national security with his actions, which I don't think has truly been substantiated. But this whole debate of what what is quid pro quo and what what is quid pro quo and what is not, um, I think it's truly frivolous. But it's fun to watch her stumble on her words, though, right? Poor AOC. Engaged in flagrant abuse of power it should be a concern to all of Amer- all americans who believe in rule of law in the united states of america you've supported impeachment uh, since before you were elected to congress uh, and you made the case that the president could be impeached for profiting off the presidency for his conduct in the russia investigation what message congressman will it send if democrats don't incorporate for example those issues into the upcoming articles of impeachment Well, I think many of those considerations will be taken up by the Judiciary Committee when all of um, this evidence is brought forth. So we'll see. I personally do believe that the president has engaged in flagrant violations of the Emoluments Clause. I'm concerned that we would allow this corruption to continue. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to come together as a caucus. And if it is this Ukrainian allegation that is what brings the caucus together, um, then I think we have to run with however we unify the House. And so while I believe personally that we should be pursuing and, invest- and investigating quite fragrant, fragrant, flagrant abuses of the Emoluments Clause, um, 
even reporting as recently as as, may, as the suspicious stops at Trump properties, even in um, congressional delegations or rather in um, foreign trips. I think that all of this is, is game for investigation, but we also need to move quite quickly because we're talking about the potential compromise of the 2020 election. Boom. <laughs> and there is the true motivation, my friends, for all of this to stymie 2020, when in actuality, I think the DNC is galvanizing Trump's base and bringing even more independence into the fold um, with, with the, the hijinks that are this investigation and this inquiry. But there's the true motivation right there. It's to unite the party in the House and to go after 2020. Um, so let's just let's just take the buckshot approach. But, you know, they're, they're anti-gun. So don't you don't use a gun metaphor. They're just seeing what sticks on the wall, apparently, taking the buckshot approach. Dang it, I used another gun metaphor. Uh, anyway. And so this is not just about something that has occurred. This is about preventing a potentially disastrous outcome from occurring next year. Congress She's referencing 2020 there. A disastrous outcome in 2020, which is purely politically motivated. So if we talk about nefarious activities in government relative to improving one's political position. It could be argued that AOC and her DNC buddies in the House, especially Adam Schiff, Schiffless, um, are the ones that are actually executing that. And, and it wasn't necessarily Trump who did that. They are using the powers of, of their various offices to influence an election. I'm in the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Are, are you... I just, I love Wolf's face. I mean, the whole time he just looks like God almighty. This, this is what my career in journalism has, has come to. That's it for me, my friends. And this edition of AOC's asinine and socialist ramblings, heavy Trev out.